Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for this week's How I Shot It. Today, I get to talk with Jesse LaPlante. Hey Jesse, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey Trevor, thank you very much for having me. Glad to be here. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it as well. I, I see your work all the time in the community. And again, for those who are watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to ch join us in the Magmon community on Facebook. Uh, I see, Jesse, like I said, I see your work in there and I'm always mesmerized. You got these incredible photos. Uh, your control of light and the way you use light and color and everything is just uh, phenomenal. So I'm stoked to get you on here so we can learn your ways. <laughs> I'm stoked to be on here, and thank you for your kind words. It's great to hear. We work hard on it, so uh, it's it's really good to have that, that feedback. That's awesome. Jesse, tell everyone where we can find you. Where's your website, your Instagram, that kind of stuff? Yeah, website is jlaplante.com. Uh, that's the letter J, L-A-P-L-A-N-T-E.com. Instagram handle is j.laplante.photo. Excellent. And, and Jesse, I know... I. I, I well, I'll probably mention this towards the end, but I just I, I think it would be a shame if somebody missed the news. Um, you do have a workshop coming out this fall. Can you ever give everyone that that uh, link as well, just so they can go check it out? That way, as they're watching this and they're like, "Man, this is the kind of guy I want to learn from," uh, they can go find more information. Absolutely, yes. So it's coming up this fall at uh, Red Rocks Park here in Denver. Uh -huh. uh, the link to sign, it's not on sale yet, but if you want to get on the mailing list, you can be the first to find out uh, when it's going on sale. It is jlaplante.com slash iconoclasm. So uh, I know that's kind of a mouthful, but maybe we can get the link up there on the screen for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll make sure it's there, put it in the captions or something. I. Nice. I, I think it, like I said, I, I, it would be a shame if somebody didn't hear about it because you really do. Your work is, is fantastic. I love uh, just in the, and we haven't had a chance to meet in person, but just in my conversations with you, you just seem like such a classy guy. So I'm, I'm excited oh. to, to get to know you more. And, and uh, even your wife, I, your wife shoots with you as well. Is that right? She does. My wife, Moira. Yeah, we've been married for about 10 years now. And uh, we've been photographing weddings together for about 10 years. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, and you as well, man. I hope we meet someday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll make it work. We'll make it happen. So, well, really cool. Well, well Jesse, I'm, ex I'm excited to have you on here, excited that you can uh, share some of your photos with everybody, and let's just jump right into this. Is that cool? Let's do it, yeah. Looking forward to it. Awesome, awesome. So, Jesse, I, I'm going to start um, mentioning that you're from Colorado. Colorado has some beautiful landscapes, mountains, and I mean, you guys, uh, here in Arizona, we got some pretty landscapes as well with the cactus, sure. but, uh, but we don't got the mountains. That's what we're missing. So I actually yeah. want to start with one image that I love of these mountains in the background. It's one, uh, it's with a couple, uh, you, you lit them up and there's some kind of rays of sun coming in behind them. Can you tell us a little bit about that, kind of what was going through your mind, how you created it, what modifiers you used, that kind of stuff? Of course, yeah. So this wedding uh, was a rare foggy day. We almost never have fog here in Colorado, but there was this low-lying fog in this mountain valley all day long, uh, and I have a behind the scenes shot here that kind of shows how hazy it was uh, when this portrait was taken. And in the behind the scenes shot, uh, you can see that there's a mag sphere on the on the AD200 that we were using. And I, what I realized is that we had to um, underexpose the scene significantly to just kind of expose for those golden rays in the background. Uh, so to do that, we needed a more powerful uh, light and the AD200 is the most powerful thing we have, so we popped on the beam instead and uh, moved Moira there, uh, the wife slash lighting assistant, to camera left, about probably 15 to 20 feet away from the couple, uh, with the telephoto lens on the beam, uh, just to get that that real hard punch of light. I like to call that uh, kind of light tenebrism. It's a painting term that was coined by Caravaggio, the Italian painter. Yeah, um, he's one of my favorites. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. Which basically means a strong, hard spotlight uh, on the subject against a, a dark uh, background. So, um, as you can see from the BTS to the main photo, I under underexposed that about three to four stops, probably, uh, really to make those rays in the background uh, pop out, and then the uh, the, the beam to uh, make the couple separate from the background there. That's fantastic. I love how you threw in a little Caravaggio there. With uh, one, of, one of my favorite words is uh, chiaro scuro. Uh, oh, yeah, which yeah. is which is very similar to what you described as well. It's kind of that that, that contrast from light to dark. Uh, sure. And you saw that a lot in his photograph or his I shouldn't say photographs his paintings. Yeah. Um, back in the days, that's that's been fantastic. Did you study art in uh, in school in college? 
Uh, I did, yeah. I was a I was going to major in art, but I ended up transitioning to photojournalism instead and minoring in art history. Uh-huh. Uh, so I have a whole treasure trove of useless knowledge. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad I'm able to pick up some tidbits here. For this. <laughs> that's fantastic. No, that's I love it. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. I mean, to study the the the, the people, you know, the artists in the past, because that's the thing is you go to pay, go look at paintings. Like I remember my wife and I we were in Italy and we went to the. Um, the Afuzi Gallery. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it was amazing yeah. looking at all the old paintings and looking at the lighting and saying, "Wow!" I mean, these people understand light, and in order to be a really good photographer, you have to understand light. And um, I, I, I love how you said um, how you were looking for. You want to make them really stand out, and to make them stand out, you use that mag beam, and you had to move your assistant or Moira back, you know. And then just to confirm, I you said that the behind the scenes she was on the right side, but you moved her to the left side, right? I did. Yeah. Correct, yes. And then you yep. moved her back about 15, 20 feet because we were using the mag beam. So the mag beam kind of collimates that light, puts it all right on the mm-hmm. person. Um, and then again, just I'm just kind of summarizing, but you were saying that to make it really dark, uh, you just underexposed in the camera about three to four stops. Is that is that correct? Yeah, this was probably about one two fiftieth. Uh, I'm guessing f eight. You know, yeah. ISO 64 or something around there, just yeah. to really drop out that ambient because it looks like sunset, but it's probably about two hours two and a half hours before sunset uh, which that's is rad. why the ambient light is so much brighter in that bts shot that's awesome jesse i love it i love it um so i i will say that a lot of your photographs in the community i do see that that big contrast from light to dark and i i think one thing that you become really kind of uh popular for at least i've seen a few of these photos it seems like is uh is that color powder that uh, what do you call it holly powder or, or can you tell us a little bit about oh. that is it holy powder? Yeah, you got it. Yep. Yeah, tell tell us about that. I mean, I don't know. Give us the rundown. How how do we do something like this? How how did you shoot that? Sure. So the holy powder is the powder they use for color runs or uh, the holy festival in India every April. Um, we wanted to try something a little more avant garde for this engagement shoot. Uh, we've been trying to do think a little bit more outside the box for these shoots instead of doing your typical pose the couple in the field with the mountains in the background type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so for this one, we drove out to an abandoned business park just so we would have space to throw this stuff and get messy. Uh, and the couple brought some whiskey, got a little bit tipsy <laughs> ahead of time uh, just to get loosened up. And then uh, the way that I, we lit this was with two uh, lights at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock uh-huh. uh, relative to the couple. So. Um, so I'll explain that a little bit uh, because I get this question sometimes. So if I, if the photographer is at six o'clock on the clock face and the couple is in the middle of the clock face, the lights would be at ten o'clock and two o'clock. So that um, it's it's basically so that you can just kind of skim uh, the front their profiles there with the light. Uh, not it's not a full backlight where they're rimmed. But uh, it's not a front light where they would just be completely lit flat. And what that also does is provide a little bit of backlight uh, to make that holy powder really pop off the screen there. And uh, so the powder is actually colored. So there were no gels on the lights, but yeah. each light had a grid basically to cut the light from falling onto uh, there were vehicles in the background and trees and uh, grass and pavement and all that kind of stuff that if it was just bare flashes, it would have lit all that stuff up. Um, so what the what those grids do is really just concentrate that light onto the couples uh, and the powder that they're they're throwing the couple and the powder. So that's yeah. awesome. I love it, and thank you for that explanation as far as using those grids because, like you said, it, it just keeps that light focused and concentrated, uh, so you're not lighting up everything. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I I I, I want to give that a shot one of these days. I haven't got a chance to use that holy stuff. Now I will say I have heard that when you use that, you want to make sure that you keep your camera far away. Is that uh, it's funny that you say that because uh, for one shot that didn't turn out at all, I had them throw it directly at me. Uh, and so I had my camera all wrapped up in, you know, I call it my camera condom. It's like a poncho <laughs> for the camera. And uh, I had a rain jacket on and all this stuff. And the shot didn't turn out at all because my light was in the wrong place. And yeah, I was uh, scraping that stuff out of there for weeks afterwards. So I wouldn't recommend it. I'd definitely say get some sort of camera housing or um, rain jacket for your camera uh, because yeah, it can get in there and you'll be it'll be all over your sensor in no time. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I have heard that it's uh, it, it's so fine that it can get inside the camera. I if, I think if it were me, I would step way back and shoot with like a two hundred millimeter lens or something and just right. like, <laughs> get, be like, you guys do your thing. I'm gonna yeah. stay back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was a seventy, I think, so I, I didn't get hit in this shot in particular. Yeah. So Jesse, you'd mentioned the ten and two position, and uh, and and then you said you talked a little bit about possibly, or it wasn't behind them to get that full backlight. You do have an image here though with the cigar smoking, Can you, and I believe this one's all full backlit. Tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah, so this is a similar lighting scheme to the last one. Uh, the only difference is we, I brought those lights from ten and two around to twelve o'clock, right behind the couple. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I had two lights instead of just one is I wanted to play with the color a little bit. I wanted, I knew I wanted a blue uh, gel for the smoke to make uh -huh. that pop up a little bit, but uh, it was sort of casting uh, the blue onto the couple. So then I popped another light in there with a half CTO, uh, not knowing if it would fix the issue or not, but it actually, I think, did. Um, and the light that's hitting the, the bride's uh, chest there is actually bouncing off of her forearm, the arm that she's holding. Okay. Uh, the cigar from to kind of get a little bit of kickback on the front. Um, but these are also gridded, just like that last shot with the holy powder, because uh, the bride and groom were surrounded by trees. It was still quite a bit of ambient light going on. Uh, so without the grids, the lights basically just spraying everywhere, hitting the trees. Uh, but I wanted this really clean black image yeah. so that the only thing that's showing up in the frame is what's being lit by those lights so that the ambient exposure isn't affecting the the photo at all so ambient is 100 percent killed and uh just lit with those two grids half blue gel and uh half cto what, what so uh, your your two lights that were behind them how high up were they on stands where i mean was it was it I'd low say they, was it they were about 10 feet back and uh from the couple and probably about shoulder level with okay. either one of them I think the uh the cto was behind her the blue gel was behind him and the blue gel was the light that had the blue gel was pointed up a little bit more to just kind of illuminate that smoke and not hit yeah. them quite as much. And uh, the CTO was more kind of hitting her uh, in her arm for that kind of warm light you're seeing there in the kickback. Yeah. It looks like, it, it, from from the looks of it, it looks like it was almost bouncing off her face and then illuminating her arm there, is my guess. Um, yeah, maybe both of those things are probably happening. Sometimes I don't know exactly what's happening. Yeah, just, yeah, no, I, I'm right there with you. Up and shoot and hope it looks cool and if yeah. it doesn't i'd move some things and it, yeah. uh, well yeah. you it nailed it here man it looks rad i love this shot um and, and i love the fact that when you look at it the first thing you think is oh purple gel blue gel but in reality it's a combination of that cto mm -hmm. with the blue that created that purple um, right which I, I just love it i love it um awesome awesome job so so uh, jesse another one of your shots that i think was probably the one that i i Gosh, I almost feel like it was one of the first shots I saw of yours that uh, I absolutely loved. It, it It's the one where the couple is kind of wrapped in the blanket. Uh, and, and for selfish reasons, I, I really want to know how you shot this. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. So we the last year or so, we've been doing a lot of these star shots uh, because they're fun to do and people love them. Yeah. Um, there's three different ways we do these. One, we do it as a composite. Uh, two, we will do the ambient exposure and then bring the couple in at the end of the exposure and flash them with rear curtain sync. Uh, and then the third way, which is the way we did it here, uh, is to just have the couple hold very still for the 10 to 15 seconds that it takes to capture those stars. Uh, and it works. You can do it that way if there's uh, low enough ambient light that they're not. If they move a little bit, you're not seeing that ghosting. Yeah. Uh, so this one, I believe, was a 10-second exposure. Um, they were perfectly sober, so no swaying at all. They were able to hold very still for 10 seconds. Uh, and I lit them with a sphere, uh, mag sphere and grid combo, okay. and also a, a half CTO so that I was able to shift the color temperature to the blue end of the spectrum uh, to make the sky look, appear a little bit more blue. So, and I imagine being that it was a 10 second exposure, you must have had, so so there must have not been any ambient light nearby. It looks like maybe there was a little bit hitting the, is it snow yeah. right there? Yeah, so this is a, this is Beaver Creek Mountain here in Colorado, which is a ski resort. So in the background, they actually had a snow cat uh, grooming the runs mm. for the next morning. Uh, 
so that was actually the lights from the top of the snowcat kind of filtering through the trees there, but gotcha. it wasn't enough light to affect the couple at all. Gotcha. And what, what kind of lens did you use here? Do you remember? It looks almost like a 35 millimeter maybe? Actually, I think this was my 14 to 24, but I'm pretty sure it was zoomed in all the way to 24. Gotcha. So yeah, very Love close. <laughs> So about 10 second exposure. And then I imagine it's, you know, I wish, I wish our cameras would record uh, flash power because it seems like that question sure. always comes up a lot. People will say, oh, what flash power do you use? And I'm like, yeah. that, you know, I mean, in the, in the moment when I'm shooting, I'll, I'll just adjust on manual and kind of dial it in where I need it. But I, it unfortunately, it doesn't record it. Um, I'm guessing you probably had pretty low flash power, though. Um, My guess is it was probably 1 one twenty eighth, just yeah. because it, ISO for something like this has to be up in the two to 3,000 range. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and some of these times I actually have to use the neutral density filter just to cut the flash even further, especially if I'm using the Godox AD200, which is more powerful. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just too bright for that, for that high ISO. But I'm, I'm thinking this was a speed light at 1 one twenty eighth is my guess. Nice. Love it. So Jesse, to wrap this up, there's uh, one last image let's talk about, cause you, you mentioned a little bit about composites and the last thing, how, how sometimes you do that. Um, I know you posted an image in the community not too long ago, uh, a couple months maybe, uh, or maybe it was even less yeah. than that. But it was uh, it was a shot you had mentioned it was a composite, uh, but it got a lot of uh, comments and likes and so forth, and people were kind of curious how you did shoot that. Um, it's the one in the desert. Can you uh, give us a rundown on that shot as well? Absolutely, yeah. So this is at the Great Sand Dunes in southern Colorado. Um, the hike to the top of the dunes is extremely strenuous because of how you sink into the sand as you're going up the dunes and the couple wasn't quite able to make it to the top. Uh, so I ran up to the top real quick, uh, took the canvas shot, it's what I call the kind of the background shot without the couple, uh -huh. of the dunes uh, with the light coming in there from camera left and then went back down, uh, took a portrait of the bride and groom to be on a different dune that wasn't quite as photogenic as the canvas dune. Uh, and then sort of combine them later in post, uh, just making sure that the lighting angle of the sun from camera left was the same. Um, but then the magma product I used on this one was the sphere, or not the sphere, sorry, the beam, uh, because it was broad daylight. It looks like it was later in the afternoon, but it was actually, again, similar to that first shot, a lot brighter uh, in person than it looks in this photograph. So they were sort of falling. I knew I wanted to pop them out of that black space in the background there. So to do that, I needed a really strong rim light. Yeah. So this the uh, beam on the AD200 was enough juice to give me that kind of rim behind her dress and her hair there to sort of make them pop out of that black that black background. Love that. Love that. And so then you just took it from the other dune and kind of just did the composite in Photoshop and put them on this, uh, this, uh, you call, you called it the plate. I think you heard, heard, is that right? Canvas. Yeah. Canvas, the canvas. Or plate, <laughs> either one works. Excellent. But the, the other shot that I did of them, uh, was similar to this one. The dune just didn't look quite as cool. So yeah. I wanted to really combine it to make it look perfect. I think what's important to mention here is the, the idea that you said you want to make sure the light matched the same angle. So it's like you, you shot, you know, your canvas shot of the landscape. And then you said, okay, I need to make sure the light, you know, it's coming from the left-hand side. I need mm -hmm. to make sure that I match it with my couple. And I, I think that's one of those uh, sometimes overlooked, I, you know, facts is when you're creating those composites, whether it be a, a bridal party or whatever, you got to make sure your light is consistent throughout the frame. Um, otherwise, it might, it might fly with, uh, you know, a couple or a bridal party, but it's not going to fly with other photographers because they're going to look at it and be like, eh, your light is <laughs> like coming from different weird directions here. So... Yeah, you don't want to see the photographer in the photo, is what we always say. So, you know, you, like, for example, here, it looks like that rim light could just be from the sun, yeah. uh, which is what we're going for, because we don't want someone to look at it and say, well, this is so clearly flash photography. You yeah. Know? We want it to look somewhat natural. And like you said, if you're a photographer, you, you will see that it is lit, of course, um, but we want it to look a little bit more natural and sort of blend in with the ambient, which is what Magmod is so great for. That's awesome. Jesse, you're amazing, man. Um, be before we run, let's, let's give everyone, uh, tell us one more time. It was jlaplante.com backslash iconoclasm, I-C-O-N-O-C-L-A-S-M. Is that right? Nailed it. I'm awesome. impressed. <laughs> and actually, you, I, I was talking to you beforehand. You told me what iconoclasm stands for. Maybe I think we should end with uh, telling people kind of, are you okay with revealing that? 
Of course, yeah. So uh, the colloquial definition of iconoclasm, so the modern day version of iconoclasm, is basically just breaking away from societal norms. Mm -hmm. uh, so within the wedding industry, which is very homogenous and says you have to do these things this way, you have to shoot to get published, you have to shoot to appease the family and the planners so that they'll refer you. Um, our whole mission statement is sort of do what inspires you, shoot for yourself, and then find clients uh, that gravitate toward that. And then you'll be a lot more fulfilled in what you're doing uh, so that you're actually shooting for yourself and your clients at the same time. That's fantastic. So it's going to be about that, but it's also going to be a lot of OCF, a lot of MagMod stuff. Uh, it's yeah. going to be how we do these night photos, how we do star shots, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So hope to see you guys there. Yeah, that's awesome, Jesse. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us and, and for spending time with us this morning. Uh, or actually, I should say this afternoon. I, uh, I really appreciated it. I, I know I love your work, and I, I'm constantly inspired by it, and so I'm glad that I had this opportunity to learn from you. Um, and we, we appreciate you there in the community. And guys, if you're watching this again on YouTube, make sure to join uh, Jesse and myself and everyone else here in the Magmon community on Facebook. And of course, be sure to subscribe and like these videos and comment, all that good stuff so that we know that you guys are enjoying it. Jesse, you rocked it, buddy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Trevor. I really appreciate it as well. Thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Uh -huh.